Hey everyone, in this tutorial I want to show you how you can prepare your reference images to make it easier to draw. For this tutorial I'll be using Adobe Photoshop to prepare the images. You could of course use any other photo editing software to do this, but since I know how to use Photoshop that's what I'll be using. The basic concepts should be the same for any other software. Before we get into the steps I take, I want to talk about how the range of tones in the drawing or image plays a big part in how appealing it is to the viewer. To me, one of the things that can make a drawing look good is when there's a good range of tones between the darkest point of the drawing to the lightest point. In other words, the level of contrast. Let's look at an example. So here's one of my drawings which I've edited in Photoshop just to show you what I mean. In this first image, I've reduced the contrast so that the darkest part of the drawing is not 100% black and the lightest part of the drawing is not 100% white. You can see here on this scale that the darkest part of the image is at this point here and the lightest part is at this point here. I guess it still looks okay, but to me it's too flat. So this would be as if I did the drawing in a way that maybe I didn't use a dark enough pencil for the dark areas and I shaded in every part of the drawing including the highlights. Now let's imagine that I did the shadow areas darker. You can see on the scale that the darkest point is now black, but the lightest point is still where it was. It looks better than the first image. Now in this third image, let's imagine that I made the highlights 100% white, or in other words erased them or didn't shade them in the first place, leaving the lightest possible tone of white, which would be the paper itself in this case. Looking at all three images, you can see how the image with the larger range from dark to light looks much more appealing than the image with the smaller range. I'm showing you these examples on a digitally edited image just to make it easier to make my point, but the same principles would apply to an actual drawing where I used darker pencils for the shadows and made the highlights the same as the paper. So to me, this range between dark and light is one of the reasons why a drawing may look more appealing or not. Of course this would also apply to drawings with colour, but rather than contrast, it may translate to vibrance. You can see the difference between these two images, it's clearly obvious which one looks better. I should also mention that by no means is this always necessary. If the artwork is supposed to look lighter or hazed, then of course that's totally fine. This is just my thoughts in general when it comes to art that appeals to me personally. So with all this in mind, it makes sense to try to apply this idea to our drawings and therefore we can try to prepare our reference images in a certain way. For this tutorial, I will be preparing reference images of this dog which I found on Pixabay. Firstly, since I want to do the drawing in black and white graphite pencils, the first thing I like to do is make the reference image black and white as well. Obviously, if I was going to draw this image using coloured pencils, I would skip this step. Converting an image to black and white in Photoshop is very simple. You go to Image, Adjustments, and then click on Desaturate. Now let's talk about size. I usually use an A3 light box to trace the outlines, simply because I don't really enjoy the outlining process, and I think to achieve a good result in the end, the location and size of the elements need to be as accurate as possible. If I finish my drawing and one eye is a little too low or too large, it can be quite disappointing. Some people draw a grid on their reference image and do it that way, but personally I like to speed up this part as much as possible and that's why I trace it. It's very accurate and I can get to the fun part much quicker. So since I'm going to trace my outlines, I need to print my reference images at the same size I'll be drawing it in. I want to draw this dog on an A3 sized sheet of paper, but I only have an A4 printer. So there's a few steps involved which I'll show you later, but for now, whether this drawing is going to be A4, or A3 or A2, the steps here are the same. Basically we want to create a matching size document in Photoshop and then place the reference image on it and arrange it nicely so that it looks good. This is where layout and composition comes into play. Okay, so I'm going to create a new document and I want it to be an A3 size document. If you can't find A3 here, you can go to print and view all presets and it should show you the other sizes. Select A3, create. Now my drawing is going to be landscape orientation, so I can rotate the image like this. And then we can either drag this image up here and release it, or we can press Control A, select the entire image, Control C, and Control V to paste it. Now that I have my reference image on the correctly sized document, I can make the image look like how I want it to look like when the drawing is finished. So to resize my image, I can press Control T and then drag it. This looks about right. You can also rotate it a little bit. That's probably a little bit too big. A bit smaller and press Enter. 
Now at this point, you can also decide whether you want to draw the background or not. So if I'm not drawing the background, there's another thing I like to do, which is basically um, select the eraser and then make sure it's a bit bigger size and basically erase the background so that you can see the composition of the drawing a bit better as well. I'm not going to draw the collar. I can rub this part out. And there you go. If you want to get rid of more of the background so that we only see the dog, you can select the dodge tool and then play around with these settings. It's probably highlights that's going to be right. Basically, it's going to erase whatever is um, past a certain lightness level like this. And it won't touch the, the dark furs of the dog. Like this. There we go. So that's going to give me a pretty good idea of what the drawing is going to look like. Before I play with this image any further, I want to save this file as one of the reference images that I'm going to be printing. It's probably going to be too dark, but it's okay because it's got the proper contrast from the original image and I want to retain those values so that I can see it when I'm drawing. If we start playing with this image and making the, the dark parts lighter, we might be ruining the, the main contrast of the image. So I'm going to save this file as a JPEG, which will be called my reference one. That's one. And do it at full quality. Sometimes in a reference image, it can be difficult to see the details in the darker or lighter areas. So what I like to do is edit the image to enhance these details so that I can see them a little better when drawing. There's a couple ways to do this. One of them is the levels tool. So I can go to image adjustments levels. I can see a graph that shows you basically a breakdown of all the tones in this image from black to white. By dragging this slider, I can make the dark parts a bit lighter. But the problem is the light areas are getting too light. So this isn't my ideal way of doing it, but this is good to show you the range of tones in the image. Sometimes if the darkest point is not a complete black, this graph will actually start from around here, right? And you can actually move this to make the darkest point black and vice versa for the white. Let's cancel this one. The way I like to do it is if you go to image adjustments, shadows, highlights. You can instantly see a lot more detail in this image. What it's done is balanced out all the dark areas and all the light areas to show you more detail. And you can fine tune that with these settings here. So this area is for the shadows. And basically I'm going to drag these around to find a level that I like. That looks about right. Also bear in mind that when you print this you, won't, you might not see as much values depending on your printer. It might not show you as much detail as you can see here. So it's good to be a bit more on the lighter side for the shadows. And for the highlights, this section here will allow you to make the white areas darker. So the more I drag this, the darker the white areas get. Now this reference image is going to be our second reference image. And basically it's just a reference image to show us more detail. So it's okay if this doesn't look quite right. It'll show us more detail on the white areas of this image, which we won't be able to see if we don't do this. So I'll adjust this until I think it's good. So now if I switch the preview off, you'll see what it looked like before. As you can see, there's a lot more detail being exposed, which we normally wouldn't be able to see. So I'm happy with that. Okay. Now this would be my second reference image, which I will save now. So as you can see, this is pretty much what the drawing will look like when it's finished or something between this and the other reference image, because I might want to make these areas a bit darker than what's shown here, more like the original image. Okay. So here we have reference image one and reference image two. 
Now you might be wondering why I don't just print this one out and draw from this one because I can see so much more detail here, right? Well, the reason is because doing what I did here kind of flattens the image as well. Like I ruined a bit of the highlights here in the nose. Basically, if you look at this image here, um, you can see the nose is kind of sticking out towards us. It comes out a bit more, pops out a bit more from the image. Whereas in this one, it kind of flattens it out and it makes everything a bit more balanced together. So I, I use both images when I'm drawing so that I can still see the, the full range of contrast in the original image. Okay, so as mentioned earlier, I can't just print these off because I don't have an A3 size printer. So I need to split these up into A4 pages, which I can stick back together when, once they're printed out. Because I want to have these images printed out in, in exactly the same size that I'm going to draw them. So that I can do the outlines and, and basically it just makes everything easier. So we'll start with the reference one. Basically what I'll do is I'll create a new document, which is an A4 size. Okay. And then I will copy that paste it over here and then I'll invert it to make it black. Now I know that this is an A4 page and then I'll duplicate it by holding down alt. Okay. Now I have these two uh, layers over here. One, one's on the left, one's on the right. Now if I hold down control and click on this area here, it'll select that page. Okay. Now with the original image selected down here, I can just copy this. So I edit, copy, and go to my new A4 document and paste. Now, uh, sometimes when you print, the margins on the printer might cut some, some of your image off. So I like to move this in a little bit because this part doesn't really matter. Move these in a bit, and that's basically what I'm gonna print. So I'll do the same thing for the other side. Hold down control on this layer so that that's selected. Make sure my actual drawing is, is selected on the layers panel. Edit, copy, go to my A4 document, paste, and then move it this way a bit. There we go. Now do exactly the same thing for the other reference image and we'll end up with four pages to print. I'll do that now. Okay, so now we have four different layers for the four sheets of paper that we're going to print. And we're going to stick them all together once they're printed. Okay, so here we have our printed reference images. The reason why you see three of them is because I had to print out a few different ones to see how they turned out with the printer. Um, the original ones ended up being way too dark and I had to go back to Photoshop and increase the brightness for everything. So just keep that in mind. Uh, depending on your printer, you'll have to adjust it differently to what I've done here. So for the next step, you're going to need some sticky tape, a box cutter, a ruler, and a cutting mat. So here I have one of the reference images printed on two sheets of paper. So what I'm going to do is um, line up the ruler with the end of the print and try to make it as accurate as possible so that we're not cutting any of the image off. And do that for both prints. Once we've done that, we want to line it up as good as we can. And instead of putting sticky tape all the way down on the front of this reference image, I don't want the sticky tape to get in the way when I'm doing the outlines. So what I do is I put a little bit of sticky tape on the bottom and a little bit on the top just to keep it in place. And then I'll flip it around the other way and I'll put the sticky tape on the other side. And I'll do exactly the same thing for the other reference image. Okay, so there you have it. I have my main image, which is mostly how the drawing should look like when it's completed. And I have this second reference to be able to see more details. Having them both in the same size as what I'm drawing is a bonus and makes things a lot easier. At this point, I would use my light box to do the outlines. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and got some useful tips out of it.
If you have some time, check out my website as I will be publishing courses and tutorials on drawing and digital art. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching.